This is the house that Peggy built, not with her hands, but with her imagination. It would be a haven, she said, for composers in mid-career. Too old for the scholarships of youth and too young to rest on their laurels. They could live here and write music, free of the weekly pressure to earn rent. Peggy was Peggy Glanville Hicks, an important figure in Australian music, a unique voice among 20th century composers. While her contemporaries were exploring 12-tone serialism, chance procedures and electronic composition, Peggy was developing a tuneful, modal language. But there was nothing reactionary about this. Her music still sounds fresh and original. She was a pioneer and her lasting achievement is that through her music and her ideas she has helped give definition to the new world. Peggy was born in Melbourne in 1912, completed her studies in Europe before the war, then moved to New York. As a composer, she had plenty of successes, but they were never enough to keep her from having to earn her living as a critic. She moved to Greece in the late 1950s, eventually returning to Australia in 1975. The following year, she bought her house in Sydney's Paddington area, where she held court for the rest of her life, often to an audience of younger composers. Recalling her own struggle to earn money, she had the idea for a composer's house, and at her death in 1990, left 45 Ormond Street to the nation for that purpose. Uh, my name is William Barton. I'm a composer and contemporary instrumentalist. I've been playing the Did You Do for uh, just on 30 years almost. And I'm a composer in residence at the Peggy Glenville Hicks House in Paddington. Being an artist and composer, you know, it's always important for for musicians or artists of any type to, to have a place for them to create and be free and be a part of what I consider this particular place to be a part of a legacy. Only Peggy Glenville Hicks's uh, uh, compositions live on through this house and through the musicians and composers who have, have, have graced these walls and these floors and kept the sound vibrating which is the most important thing. I was very thrilled and, and humbled to receive this honour to, to, to be here, you know, and to, to be uh, sharing the house with the, the wonderful Veronique Saray. The days have, have moods to them, like they have seasons, you know, and so you get to see all the seasons come through the light and the reflections of the windows and, and even the, the shadows from the trees and the breeze blowing and you get all this creative sort of flow and you're immersed in this you know, sometimes quite a silent world, but it's those silent moments where you actually create or find the inspiration. You know, like in the front room here, uh, there's uh, Aunty Peggy's uh, clothes, you know, in that port just right there. And so when we first came here, I acknowledged that we're walking into a space and there's been many other wonderful composers who've graced the the, the house, you know, and uh, to be a part of it is a very special thing. Peggy's house still contains some of the artwork she collected through her life. There are paintings, sculptures and concert posters. Most striking of all is the mural of ancient charioteers Peggy herself painted on her garden wall. I painted this because uh, it was something to do. This is the back of a wash house. And then, of course, quite recently, there he built, somebody else bought the house, 
and had made that extension, so I had to paint in two more horses. And they were a little bit too long for their, but I had to fill up the space. And so I called them Horatio and Hysteria, because they're both obviously giggling like mad. <laughs> Over the years, the paint flaked and the plaster and brickwork deteriorated, but following renovations in 2012, the rear of the house was extended to enclose the mural. You might perhaps query the painting's artistic merit, but it serves as a daily reminder of Peggy's former presence. I grew up in uh, Mount Isa, which is far northwestern Queensland. Uh, it's about 1,800 kilometres west of Brisbane and I grew up in quite a uh, culturally diverse uh, community, having uh, you know, the, the beautiful magic uh, inspiration of going out to the land as a young child with my elders, with my mother and father, my uncles and aunties, and to, I guess, be inspired you know, on this journey through life um, and be a part of the mystery of the did you do. <laughs> So the did you do being primarily uh, in the Western world, like in, in the eyes of the Western world, you know, an improvisational droning instrument, but there's so much to, more to that and all did you do players are, are creators, you know, real time composers. But for myself as a composer, who primarily works uh, across the broad board, like um, with classical music or notated music, um, it hasn't really changed. You know, like th that first seed that was planted in my mind as a child in Mount Isa, it's just added to it. You know, it's added to uh, my, my canvas of sound, you know, and how I notate things is just, uh, is just an implied suggestion of of what I want my friends to play, because I want them to play with me, you know, if they're not improvisers as well, you know, so you notate what I hear in my head. I hear a polyphony of sound, even though the do you do is one drone note, you know, in, in the basic sense, but there's so much more to that. And so it's all those little layers, the silence between the sounds, um, that actually create this storyline. <laughs> The, the Peggy House has uh, helped me as a composer in many different ways, you know, from having the piano here and having a space where I, I can feel that I have the time to, to focus on my composition. And you know, and I've done quite a lot here this year, which has been really terrific to, to have the space. I've worked on a number of commissions from the Sydney Symphony to the Queensland Orchestra to um, you know, ABC Fresh Start, um, a, a commission called Calcony, which I co-wrote with uh, Veronix Ray, um, to numerous uh, webcasts and so on and so forth here. But it's helped me just to be immersed in this community and learn more about the Paddington community. The Peggy Glanville Hicks Composer's House was officially opened in late 1993 and its first resident moved in at the start of 1994. But it hadn't been easy getting the house to this point. The will was contested, a trust had to be set up, and then there was the poor condition of the house itself. At a bare minimum, $100,000 worth of work was needed to make the place safe and habitable. Peggy had believed her royalties would cover such costs, but they didn't come close. So, in addition to Peggy's initial vision, we must thank the hard work, persistence, creativity and tireless fundraising of her executors, her old friend James Murdoch and her lawyer Shane Simpson, for making her dream into a reality.
But reality needs constant maintenance. In a 140-year-old house, floors will sag and roofs leak. Since the official opening, a dedicated volunteer board has dealt with the day-to-day -day running of the residence and raised funds from state and federal bodies and from private donations to ensure its future. That work is never ending. Peggy stated in her will that she wanted her final dwelling to create a haven and peace of mind to enable the composer in residence to further his or her creative work. The Peggy Glanville Hicks Composer's House has now offered this to 26 residents. Being at the Peggy Glanville Hicks House has given me the opportunity to further explore the career path and the inspiring path of, you know, music composition and looking at my work more as installations as well, you know, where there's not just the music component, but there's all these other elements that make that music into something special. I'd like to make well wishes for the next future generation of storytellers and composers who are uh, who have the opportunity to, to be in the space. And I say, make the most of the opportunity. It's not often that you, you get a house for, for a year, you know, particularly in an area like this and um, in a house like this where there is so much legacy involved, you know, and so you can make the most of it and you can, you know, make a contribution from yourself back to that legacy by actually just writing music. It's a great honour to you know, be here as a composer in residence at the Peg Glenville Hicks House and you know, be a part of this continuing legacy which I will carry on with me uh, through my lifetime. <laughs>